Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So then in this one, I want to share with you a brand new product research strategy that you probably haven't seen before. Um, and it's gonna be kind of like flipping the whole process on its head. So when you watch other product research strategies on YouTube, um, most of them, if not all of them, focus on the actual product itself, which it works and it can be a good thing. However, speaking to a lot of people on Instagram, um, it leads people to become a bit narrow-minded and just have to tunnel vision where they're completely focused solely just on the product whereas you need to be taken into consideration the actual market and the audience in which you're going to be advertising to so for example it doesn't matter how good the actual product is that you find it doesn't matter if it does miracles if you can't find or target the audience on Facebook um, if there isn't a market for the product then of course you're not going to sell any of those products so you need to be taken into consideration the actual market the product is going to fit as well. So the best type of products then that work well using Facebook ads are what I call passion products. So these are products that you sell to a passionate audience. So something to do with a dog, something to do with cycling, something to do with golf, um, something to do with a subject in which people are passionate about. When it comes to Facebook marketing, then we're advertising on a platform where people aren't looking to buy anything. So unless they're seriously passionate and interested in your product, then they're not going to click on it and they're certainly not going to buy it. So so that is why you need to be selling what I like to call passion products. So in this video then we're going to jump into my computer, I'm going to take you inside the audience insights tool and I'm going to show you how to find passionate audiences using this tool because once you find a passionate audience then it becomes a lot easier to find a product that fits that market. Worst case scenario if there's nothing on AliExpress or CJ Dropshipping you can always create your own print on demand product, some sort of design that you can put on a uh, put on a t-shirt um, or whatever you choose it to be. The reason this strategy works so well too is because we're starting on the other side. So rather than focusing on the products, we're actually focusing on the audience first. So when we find that audience on Facebook, then we already have the interests in which we're targeting. So the last thing we need to do is actually find the product. So you're actually finding the audience and the interests that are passionate and actually gonna work when we run our ads. So the last thing we actually need to do to find the product, which is actually the easiest thing to do. Now, before we jump into my computer, into my Facebook ad manager account, um, I just wanna quickly mention, as always, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation call with me in this video so chance for me and you to talk one-to-one -one. you can ask me whatever questions you want whether it's about your store Facebook ads um, run certain product ideas um, I can help you find interests whatever it is um, if that's something you want a chance for win to win all you have to do then is simply subscribe to my YouTube channel um, like this video and leave a comment down below if you commented on my previous video then just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced and with that being said then let's jump straight into my computer here we are then guys inside my ad manager account in inside the audience insights tool. If you've never seen this before or used it before, then I thoroughly recommend you watch some more videos on it, um, do some research into it, start playing around with it and actually get to know how it works because the amount of information it gives you um, is really, really valuable. So anyway, bearing in mind then what I said in the beginning of the video, the whole idea here is to find passionate audiences and this is what I'm gonna show you what to do because once you have a passionate audience, then it becomes a whole lot easier to find a product that people will be passionate about. So to give you an example then, if we just put kitchen in here, say you're in the kitchen niche, I'm gonna go through probably two or three random niches in this video, um, just to give you multiple examples. So I've put kitchen in here as an interest, all the demographics, everything is just standard as broad. And to give you an idea then of what a passionate audience doesn't look like would be this here. So if you were to pick kitchen solely as an interest, these are the top categories and top page likes in which people within the kitchen interest also are related to. So for example, if you were to pick this as an interest to target, then the audience within this interest, these are the top categories in which they're related to, and these are the top pages in which they like. So essentially to find a passionate audience, you need to pick an interest where the majority of the other pages in which the people in that are related to are also related to the niche you're targeting, if that makes sense. Any questions on any of this, by the way, um, make sure you leave a question below in the comment section. I always get back to every single person. So this is an example then of an audience or an interest that isn't solely passionate about one subject. And the way that I know that then is that if we just open up, um, let's just try the first, say five, pages of these so I'm just opening these up into another tab 
uh, four, and then five. If it was a passionate audience, then the majority of these top categories and the majority of these top likes would be related to kitchens would be related to the kitchen niche and if they are then that tells me that the majority of the people within this kitchen interest are really interested in kitchens because the majority of the interests related to it is also kitchens if that makes sense but if we just have a look at the top few pages then we have kitchen kitchen fun with my three sons which is kind of relatable in fact it's about um, looks like certain different recipes and stuff, which is a good sign. That's pretty decent. Um, if we look at the engagement as well, there's a ton of engagement on that post. Pretty decent on that post as well. So this is actually a good page. Um, potentially one we could delve deeper into solely. If we have a look at the next page then, um, you can see this is nothing to do with kitchens whatsoever. It looks like some sort of clothing company. So that's not a good sign. Um, if we have a look at this one, then it's kind of like the same thing. Another clothing or apparel company. If we have a look at this next one, this looks more like it, more kind of related. Um, there's something about cleaning, but the majority of the posts seem to be about cooking, which is a pretty good sign. And then recipes from home, and again, it's about cooking. So three out of five isn't too bad. Um, if we go back and just look at a few more, just to double check, because in theory, we want the majority of these to be about um, actually kitchens, like related to kitchens, because then that tells you that people inside are passionate about kitchens because they're not like or related to other things. Um, and another thing you need to double check it against as well. Um, in fact, let's stick on the top categories. If you open this up to see all and even as far down as you go it's still related to kitchens and that is a really strong sign the further down you go it's kind of like the least related top categories so basically what that means is that say if you got down to number 27 so media news and company and these are still pages related to kitchens and that is a really good strong sign another thing you always need to double check as well before you actually decide on a certain interest is the page like section and the affinity scores because essentially the the higher the affinity score the better so the more relevant that certain pages within the interest you've selected up here so hopefully that makes sense so with a 37 affinity score that's actually quite low so what that tells me is that a small percentage of people within this base interest so within the kitchen interest actually like this page and then because obviously that's the highest and it's the same with all of these so what that tells me is that within this niche because it's so large we can double check that 35 to 40 million people there's going to be a crazy wide range of people within there so in order to test that interest significantly you'd have to spend a ton of money um, to, to essentially test a high enough percentage of it. A better thing would be to take one of these page likes. So for example, then Kitchen Crafty Fun. Um, you wanna make sure that you always open up these pages to see what they actually are and actually double check the content. And what you're looking for then is content that's relatable to the niche because that tells you that the page is related to the niche and if it's got a lot of engagement on its posts. So for example, then 62 million views, which is just, absolutely ridiculous in fact they must be boosting that running ads to it um, so 688 shares obviously to the 4th of july um, it's going to get some good engagement make sure you go through the posts and what you're looking for then is kind of like the average engagement rate on their posts because a page that gets good engagement obviously has a passionate audience which would potentially make it a good interest to target so the engagement is actually very good so i'm just going to go back to my audience insights tool then see if we can actually target this solely on its own so kitchen crafty fun let's get rid of this one kitchen craft i don't think we can actually so we can't, so let's go back to the kitchen niche and try and find a page in which we can actually target. So kitchen fun with my three sons. Um, let's try this one. Here we go. So kitchen three sons, make sure you get rid of the original one. And now what I'm guessing is that, let's just close this down a bit, see the top 10, is that when we have a look at the top 10 categories now immediately a lot more of these are kind of like relatable to the kitchen niche if we have a look at the affinity scores the affinity scores are a lot higher so that tells me then that there's a higher percentage of people within that audience that like these certain pages which is a good thing as long as these pages are actually related to um, the kitchen niche another reason why this is so powerful as well is because 
if you find a passionate audience, then you don't have to find a best selling product. You don't have to find a product that always has those proven results because if it's a passionate enough audience and it's a decent product in itself, then they're going to buy it. So you can also use this newest tab as well. I actually try and find products that are new to market. So I've never actually seen this before. So within the, within the baking niche, this could actually be a potential product worth testing because if you can be one of the first people on Facebook to bring certain products to the market, then it's just a recipe for making a lot of money. So to give you another quick example, then if we go back to audience insights, I don't wanna be talking for too long. I think I've been talking for over 10 minutes already. I could go on for this about hours and hours and hours. Um, if you want me to do like another part on this, um, like a part three, because this kind of like builds on the previous video I did. If you want me to do a part three, then just make sure you comment like part three down below or something like this. So let's give you another example then. If we just put dogs in here, it's a classic example, but it makes such a good one because some people are so passionate about their dogs. If we have a look at the page likes and top categories, we can see that, um, yeah, that's probably related to dogs. No, 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 no. So as you can see, the, the dog's interest contains a lot of people, but not the majority of them aren't related to dogs because these top categories aren't if that makes sense the same with the page likes as well look at the affinity scores they're really really low so that's a bad sign whereas if we go for a sub niche within dogs um let's just go for a certain breed for example then if we go for german shepherd um, and just have a look at these top categories now so we can see the um, animal pet smart pet co that i think every single one of these in fact i don't think that is um, that isn't either, but the majority, or that's probably not either, but the majority of these are related to dogs. Um, so we could even delve deep, a bit deeper into that. You can see the affinity scores are pretty high too, which is a good sign, which is a good sign. So what you would do now is go across to AliExpress and instead of just putting dogs in, you would just put German Shepherd in. Uh, click search and that way you're finding products specifically related to an audience that you know is already passionate and immediately you can see products purely related to German Shepherds and a lot of these products would do very well because they're targeting a very specific audience that is really passionate. So somebody who owns a German Shepherd, so for example, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen um, the picture I posted today of a top um, about, in fact, I'll put a screenshot on the screen now. Um, because it's because we own a German Shepherd, she found it and she just had to buy it straight away because it was solely related to what she's passionate about. So it's all about finding those products that a specific audience is passionate about. And with that being said then guys, I think we've been talking for nearly 15 minutes now, so I'm gonna call it there on this video. If you want me to go a bit deeper and just expand on what I've spoken about, then make sure you leave a comment down below, just put part three or something like that in. Um, and yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do make sure you leave a like and just to help this channel grow. We're fast approaching 7,000 subs, which is all thanks to you guys. So thank you very much. Um, I really, really, really do appreciate it. And with that being said, if you want a chance to win a one-to-one -one call with me as well, make sure you leave a comment down below. Um, and let's get into announcing the winner of the previous one. So this is my previous video then. If you haven't seen it yet, please do go and check it out. Um, it make quite an interesting story if you're new to the channel. Um, so please do go and watch it please do make sure you subscribe. Anyway, we're here to announce the winner. I'm just gonna take the URL, head over to our random comment picker. So these competitions are 100% random, so please don't ask me to pick you. Um, and the winner of the previous video then is Mayank. So thank you very much for your comment. Make sure you reach out on Instagram, we can get that call arranged. And guys, if you just wanna get straight down to business and book a call right away, you can actually do so. Just make sure you check out the links um, below this video. And with that being said then guys, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.